If you've ever wondered why an application you're using is so fast, it's almost always because they're using optimistic updates. And normally implementing these optimistic updates is incredibly time consuming and annoying, but with the brand new use optimistic react hook, it is incredibly easy. In this video, I'm going to show you not only what optimistic updates are, but how to use this hook in your React application to make it blazingly fast. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web so you can start building your dream project sooner. And today we're talking all about optimistic updates. Now in this application right now, there's a lot of problems with it. But first of all, we're not doing optimistic updates, which means when I type and I click create, you can see that there's a long pause before this item shows up. The idea behind optimistic updates is even if your API takes a minute or 10 minutes or 20 seconds, it doesn't matter. No matter how long your API takes, you make it so that whatever the user does shows up immediately for them. And then it'll rectify itself if, for example, there's an error on your API or something like that. It'll change and fix itself based on that. But it'll feel super responsive because everything you do will immediately update on your screen. This is how pretty much every social media app works. We have a light counter. It'll instantly increment. And then if for some reason there's a failure, it'll decrement you back down. That's what we're trying to implement here. And keeping track of that is incredibly difficult in a normal React application. That's because, first of all, I have, for example, my to-dos here. So anytime my to-dos change, I need to make sure I update my list. That's super straightforward in what I'm currently doing. But if I wanted to track optimistic updates, I would need essentially another thing of state to determine my optimistic to-dos. And those optimistic to-dos I'd probably put in state somewhere. And then I would need to make sure I updated my optimistic to-do before I created to-do. Then after I created to-do, I would need to remove that optimistic update because it's currently in my to-dos. And then whenever my to-dos get updated from some other source, I need to make sure I update my optimistic to-dos. There's just so many different dependencies and things that could cause it to update. That is a nightmare to try to manage and maintain this on your own. And it's honestly really difficult to write custom hooks for. But React has implemented their own custom hook for you to use in this, and it's called Use Optimistic, and it takes care of pretty much all of the difficult parts of optimistic updates. Now, if you want to start using this hook inside your React application, it is experimental, so you're going to be needing to use an experimental version of React and React DOM, as well as this ESLint plugin React hooks if you're using that. And then if you're using TypeScript, you're going to want to make sure you add these reference lines in your code somewhere just so you can actually get the TypeScript definitions. But this is only important if you care about the TypeScript definitions. So what you can do is up here, we can just type in use optimistic, and this is labeled as experimental because it's, like I said, an experimental hook. So we're going to rename it as use optimistic, and this just imports directly from React. Now, the way that this use optimistic hook works is very similar to how the use state hook works. So I'm going to create a new array called optimistic to do's, and I'm going to say set optimistic to do's. There we go. And I'm going to change that to this use optimistic hook. Let me make sure I paste that down there. And by default, I'm going to set that to my to-dos. So the way that this works is when you use the optimistic hook, whatever you pass here is not just the default value, but it's also like the source of truth. So when this thing gets updated, it's going to use that as your source of truth. And these optimistic to-dos are just going to be the other things you add in is like, hey, currently I'm waiting for my to-dos to update. So here's my optimistic to-dos. So right now, if I just do that, I can replace everywhere I use to-dos, for example, down here with my optimistic to-dos, and everything's going to work exactly the same. But the main difference is see, even if I type, you can see it's working the same. And then once my to do's update, it's still updating my optimistic to do. So all those weird dependencies are all taken care of automatically for you by this, which is really nice. The key difference comes though, in that I can add optimistic to do's by calling this a set function. And again, it works just like state. So I can say, I want to add a new optimistic to do. I'm going to get my previous ones. And essentially I'm just going to add in a brand new to do like this, but this new to do is just going to have an ID, which is just going to be a random number. I'll just use crypto.randomUUID, and then it's going to take my title. So this is kind of what I expect my API to look like. And I want to make sure actually this is input ref.current.value, and I'll set that to my title. There we go. So essentially, this is what I'm expecting my API to output. And I can make this even more apparent by just coming in here, and I can say that this is going to be our optimistic to do, I'm going to set it equal to this object. So it's a little bit more clear exactly what's going on. And then I'll just put this right into there. So there we go. So I'm essentially saying, okay, I expect the result of my API to be an ID and a title. And this title, I expect it to be whatever I type in. So I'm going to set that as my optimistic to do, then I'm going to wait for my actual to do to be created. And then when it is, I'll use the actual to do value to set my to do's. Now let's see what that actually looks like when I implement it. What I can do is I can type in new and I click create. And you notice that to do immediately shows up right here, which is really great. So immediately I'm getting that feedback, 
But the real important thing is, is whatever my set to do's returns is actually overwriting this. And I can show you what I mean by that. For example, I can go down here and instead of just returning my title, I'm going to take my title and I'm just going to add something to it. So I can say title and then I'll just add something to it that says like it came from the server. So this is the result from the server and this is my expected result. Now let's refresh and I'll type in new and I'll click create. You notice it says new. And then as soon as I get the value back from my server, it's taking that old optimistic value, removing it and replacing it with the brand new value. So all of that difficult code of keeping things in sync, it's automatically taken care of for you by this use optimistic hook. It's really that simple to use. So this is pretty much the most basic way to use this. But the really nice thing about this, I'll bring my code back to where it was so that the title is actually the correct title. There we go. The really nice thing about this is you can actually add extra properties to this optimistic to do as well. For example, I can add in a status that says pending and I'll set pending to true. And that means that this is one of my optimistic to do's and I'm waiting for it to finish loading. So now down here in my code, I can actually change around what my style looks like based on that pending. So I can say that, you know what, my opacity here is going to be determined based on my to do dot pending. And if it's pending, I'll set this to like 0.5. Otherwise, I won't set it at all. And in order to get the correct typing, all I need to do is inside of here, I have a type for my to do's. Let's create a type for my optimistic to do. There we go. And this is going to essentially just be my to do type, but I'm going to add on pending, which is a Boolean that is going to sometimes be there and sometimes not. So I'm going to say to do and that type. So now I can say that this is an optimistic to do array that just cleaned up any TypeScript errors. And now you can see, let's refresh, type in new. And when I click create, you notice that this has 50% opacity until it comes back from the server with the correct value. Now that's the most basic version of this optimistic update. There's also a more advanced version of this optimistic update that works exactly the same as use reducer. So it either can work like use state, or if you pass it two properties, an initial value and a reducer function, it'll work just like use reducer. And this reducer function could be whatever you want. And then this setter right here would just be equivalent to dispatch inside of your reducer. So it literally works exactly the same as use reducer. To prove how that works, I'm just going to copy over really quickly a reducer. This is the simplest reducer you could possibly ever make. It only has one state, which is add, and it's adding that pending flag, just like we mentioned. And the payload here is just a to do. And we can even make the payload here just a string if we want. And then we can say that the title is equal to our action payload. And our ID is going to be a random ID. So there we go. We have that. There is our reducer, which looks great. And now we don't even need this typing here because essentially it's automatically getting the typing from this. So now we have this dispatch function, which we can use in place of this set here. And we can pass it along our action, which has a type of add. And it's going to have a payload, which is our title. There we go. We don't need this optimistic to do up here at all. And we just want to make sure we get this title from our input ref dot current dot value. There we go. So now let's test this out, create a brand new one, click create. You'll notice it has that 50% opacity, and then it comes in with the correct color once it loads from the server. So again, you can use it either way, whether it's going to be with a reducer or not, both of them are going to work. Now, the final thing I want to mention about this hook is that this is mostly meant for being used inside of Next.js. I mean, obviously you can use it in normal React like this, but it's kind of coming out first in Next.js for like server action stuff. So if you're using server actions, which is already experimental, you can use this hook inside of there as well, and it should work really well inside of there. Now, if you want to make sure you're learning the latest and greatest of React and Next.js, I highly recommend checking out my React Simplified course linked in the description below. It covers everything you need to know about React and Next.js from an absolute beginner all the way to incredibly advanced features. And the best part is it's brand new. I just finished updating the entire course. It's got so much content. I just highly recommend you check it out if you want to learn React or Next.js at all. I'll have it linked down in the description below for you.